Hello, everybody. It's Reed Tracy. Welcome back to our business and writing newsletter. And today's guest is Sean Nix Jones. And she has a business called Chuckling Goat, which is, is my all time favorite <laughs> business name. <laughs> And Sean is actually located in Wales, even though you'll hear her accent. She has an American accent, but she lives in Wales. And her business, Chuckling Goat, is in Wales. She lives on a farm in Ra Wales. She's written a couple different books for Hay House, but her latest book is <laughs> How to Start Your Business on Your Kitchen Table. And I love that title. It's so great. And and it's really kind of what you did, huh, Sean? You you started your business on a kitchen table after kind of helping your family getting over a health issue. So I'd love for you just to start out by telling how you got started with Chuckling Goat. Sure. Well, it was never about the cash, I can tell you that. And I can tell you what I didn't have. I didn't have any business experience. I didn't have deep pockets. I never thought that I could run a business or should run a business. For me, it was really just about trying to help my family when they were ill. So it started out when my little boy, Benji, had eczema, and then he got a horrible bronchial infection. He kept going into the doctors over and over, taking more and more antibiotics. He was just getting worse and worse. And I said to my husband, who is a Welsh goat farmer, what are we going to do? We got to do something. He's too little to be taking all these bad chemicals. I didn't know much at that time, but I knew that I could feel it in my bones. That was not good. And my husband said, let's get a goat. I said, well, <laughs> I just told you my son was sick and you're telling me get a goat. I don't understand that. But what I knew was that my husband is almost always right. It's really annoying, but he always knows this stuff. What he knew in the Welsh farming tradition is that goat's milk is very good for bron bronchial conditions and asthma and eczema. So, okay, we got a goat. We started milking the goat. I gave Benji the goat milk, and that was good. But then I had too much milk, and it was stacking up in my fridge, and it was going off, and I didn't know what to do with all this milk I had. So I went online. And I typed in, what do I do with too much goat's milk? Um, and what I came up with was this stuff called kefir, which I'd never heard of before. Um, but it was being used by a Russian doctor. Um, so I got in touch with her, said, hey, how do I make it in a good, pure way to make it really strong? She told me, and we started making it. Um, it was not a big uh, going proposition at the time because nobody had ever heard of it at that time and it was unsweetened. So it tasted really tart and tangy. So we would drive around in our car with these little pints, you know, of kefir and say, hey, here's this stuff. You never heard of it and it doesn't taste very good. Huh? And they go, oh, no, <laughs> actually not. So it was a very small acorn that our oak tree grew from. Yeah, and and then and then you you started. Didn't your husband get sick too? And you had to help him. And can you tell a little bit about that? Yeah. So my husband went into the hospital for an operation. He had colitis. They removed his entire large intestine. So he came back with MRSA, which is a superbug infection. It was eating little holes in his abdominal incision. So instead of healing every day, these little holes were getting you know longer and deeper um the doctor came out and had a look at his wound and said i have no experience with anything of this magnitude and he actually left the house got in the car locked the doors i watched him do that and and drove off the um up the track and he just left us there and i thought well so my husband has mrsa which is contagious and they won't let you in the hospital. They won't let him into hospice. So what happens? Does he just die on my sofa? Is that what we're talking about? And I hadn't met him until I was 41. You know, I'm really proof that life begins at 40. <laughs> and I thought, boy, this is not how my happy ending finishes. This man does not die on my sofa on my watch. So I was trying to figure out what I could do to change the frame. Because here's the thing, Reed. I'm not a doctor and I'm not a scientist, but I am a communications girl. And I know a frame when I see one. I was looking at all the medical stuff that I was reading and it was all talking about war. We're gonna kill the bacteria, we're gonna fight the bacteria, the bacteria is gonna fight back. And I thought, you know what? That's the wrong question. How can you kill the bacteria 
I'm not going to win that and my husband's going to die. I need to ask a different question. So what I asked was, right, how can I bring all of that into harmony? I need an ally on the microbiotic level. And that question I had an answer to. The kefir that we were making in our stone barn puts good bacteria in the microbiotic level and that suppresses the bad bacteria. It doesn't kill them, just puts them back into their ecosystem box. So I coated my husband with our kefir and he smelled like a cheese, okay? It was not a, it was not a friendly process. But in two weeks, his MRSA cleared and his wound healed and he got up out of bed and got on his tractor and he's been there ever since. So that was my own private miracle. Um, we saved my husband's life. And after that, the Welsh Assembly government sent some people over to say, you know, what's going on over here? We're hearing funny stories. They took all of our remedies and they tested them at Aberystwyth University and found, yep, okay, it's real. Uh, this, all this works. I'd use some essential oils to help knock the pathogens back. They tested that. It was effective. They tested the kefir and they said, okay, this is for real. Um, and then it got into the newspaper and then we started getting some attention around our business. So that was a time when a crisis became an opportunity. And I write about that a lot in the book. The very worst things that happen to you can be the very most powerful crucibles that can turn your business around. Yeah, I mean, you definitely, I mean, how to write your book on the kitchen table, or not write your book, <laughs> how to start your business on the kitchen table, even though you probably wrote the book there too. It's really true for you. Like you were in this farm and you found out this key for work and that it helped different people with different things. And the start, it kind of just started by you wanting to help other people and then and then it kind of spread by word of mouth. Is that kind of how things got started? Well, that's exactly how it started. And you're right. I did write the book on the kitchen table. <laughs> um, we got the, the, so I started making soaps and lotions because I thought, well, if other people are going to use this, they're not going to want to just put this stuff all over their body. It's going to have to smell good. It's going to have to feel good. They don't want to smell like a cheese. So I went to soap school and I learned to make uh, soaps and lotions and put the kefir in it. And that was a good turning point. And then Fortnum and Mason um, went, picked up our soaps and lotions and they wanted to sell them. So that was exciting. And I thought, oh, you know what I'll do? I'll write, because here we are on the farm. I've got the view, I've got the goats. I didn't have business experience, but I did have the goats. And I thought, I'll do a little um, diary of life on the farm and that can sit next to the soaps in Fortnum and Mason and the you know people who shop there might like to see the pictures of the goats so I sat down on my kitchen table and I wrote up a book um, that's such a good thing to do I know you really uh, support the idea of people writing their stories but that was the best thing I ever did because then you found that book and picked it up and Hay House republished it so that was a huge turning point for us. Um, you know, you gave us some investment and we actually were able to take it the next step. And once we had that little bump and that little support, um, then things started to really get busy. Because what we found out was if you take the kefir and drink it and put it on your skin, it works amazingly for things like eczema, which my son had. So we started to get really powerful results. Um, but I was never interested in cash. You know, we never said cash was king. We always wanted to keep it small, keep it on the farm, and help people. We're trying to give, you know, create natural healing remedies for problems that the doctors can't fix. See, that's what that's what I love. I love to. That's what gets me up early and makes me stay up late um, to try to get those natural healing solutions. And so, that's what I was trying to explain to people in the book is. You may think that you have to have it all together before you start your business. And people may go, well, I can't run a business. I don't know enough about math. You know what? I can't even balance my checkbook. I never could and I still can't. I don't know how to do a business plan. Neither do I. I never, never wrote a business plan. Turns out you don't need one. What you do need is a passion to give your gift to the world. And I really believe, Reed, that every person has a gift that is unique to them. And if they don't give that gift, it will remain forever ungiven. So a business is just a way to walk your gift into the world and give it, just like you would bake somebody a birthday cake and go, here, I made this for you. That's what it's about. You don't have to know everything before you start. I certainly didn't. You learn as you go. And that's the beauty of the process.